Magnetism, an amazing force in nature that has the ability to put lights in the sky. And through science, we have learned to harness this power of magnetism to hold small items to refrigerators and industrial use to move mountains of metal from one location to another. Well, today we're gonna to show you how to make your own magnetic standoff mounts to harness that same power to hold your props to your house. We're gonna show you where we got all the pieces, what the total cost was per unit to make these, the multiple day process that took to create these mounts, and at the very end, we're gonna actually put them in a, a mount and mount them to our house so you can see them in practical use. When it's done though, we encourage you to stick around because we're gonna tell you how you can win all of the magnetic mounts that we made in this video. With that, let's get to it. Alright guys, like we typically do in all of these types of build videos, we want to show you what it costs to build everything and the different pieces that we needed to build. So everything uh, today came from Amazon. Uh, they had everything that we needed in one location. You may know of a place maybe where you can get some of the stuff a little bit cheaper, but I didn't find anything out there. The first thing you need to get is your standoffs. And Amazon has a huge selection of standoffs depending on how deep you need them to be. We wanted at least two inches, which is what we bought for this initial project that we're recording today. But today after logging into Amazon, we see that they now have a brand new size by the company we use that's two and two fifths inches deep. So we're gonna get those going forward. And it's also a quarter of an inch wider and it will almost be a perfect fit over the, the magnets that we got. So that's what we're gonna get going forward. Today, we're actually building with just the three quarter by two inch is what we're gonna be using. After that, you're gonna make sure that you get your magnets because we're making magnet standoff mounts. So we're gonna need to get some magnets that also have a, a countersink hole in them. So the screw is flush against the magnet because you don't want any kind of gap. You want a, a flat surface which goes also for what you're gonna put these on. And if you have already a metal surface, you're gonna put these on. You don't need to get any kind of washers. We're putting these around our doors, our windows. Most of this stuff is gonna be for our trim work. So for that, we're gonna go out and get these fast cap wood washers. And I like them because they also can be countersunk with the screws when you put them into them. So that also keeps, now you have a flat surface for the metal side and a flat surface on the magnet side. And there should be a perfect connection between the two. We're also gonna paint them white, of course, to match our house as, long, as well as the screws will be white, just so it doesn't show up quite as much. The next thing you need to get is some type of resin, an epoxy resin. It's a two-part process. You need to have a hardener and a resin. We got this particular product because it's non-toxic, so you can use it in the house where it's warmer, which is also better for curing the resin. And it's, it's safe. Uh, to use. There's no fumes that come off. It does have a little bit of a smell, but there's no fumes that are toxic you need to worry about. You also need something to mix them in. If you don't already don't have a container, some people do, with, with lines on it that's, that you can make sure that your measurements are equal because with this resin, it needs to be equal parts one to one. Otherwise, it will not cure or set properly. So that's one thing you want to make sure you have some way of measuring. And these disposable cups are perfect for that particular use. And then also we got some syringes. And the reason for the syringes is it's a very small hole to get everything into. So we wanted to make sure and have something that we could put them in. And that's why we're using uh, the syringes. They fit perfectly in that. And so now let's kind of just break it down. Get up the spreadsheet here so you can see everything on the spreadsheet. Total for the, the standoffs, the magnets, uh, the resin, and the washers, if you needed them, is $3.73 per unit. Now, if you add in the syringes and the clear cups, which all can be reusable, to have just one syringe and one cup, it's $3.04. And we'll divide that by the eight standoffs that we're going to make today adds another 38 cents. So the true total cost for today's project is $4.11. In the future, when we make 45 more of these, that cost for the plastic cup and the syringe will go down to about a penny per unit. So the more you make it once, the less that part of the, that's why I made a separate equation for that. So now that you see the total cost, all the different pieces that we got, and we'll also make sure that we put links to all these products in the description uh, 
below in the video so that you can go to Amazon and see all the different products that we actually used in this particular project. With that, let's jump to the workbench though now and let's show you the process. It's a multi-day process of putting these together because some of the prep work has to dry and then the resin has to dry and then, then we're able to use them to go mounting. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so here are all the components to make our magnetic standoff mounts. And we're using 95-pound uh, uh, rare earth magnets. We're using two-inch standoffs, and I've already taken off the tops just to save us a little bit of time. Some screws and some washers. And then to kind of do the beginning prep work in this whole entire process, what we want to end up with is setting them up so they look like this so that we can fill them with resin halfway up. And that's going to hold the screw in the side so this part doesn't come off. So to do that, real simple, we'll prep one of them for you. And then we'll speed them up as we prep them all. But I just take the bottom and just put a little bit of caulk on the bottom of it. And that's just to keep everything in place and to help seal for when we flip it over because we don't want any of that um, resin to come out of the hole in the bottom. So we put a little bit on the screw also. And then we line it up, push it down, and then we'll just kind of let this sit and dry. Make sure we got it centered there. Perfect. We'll just let that sit and we'll let it dry. Because the whole goal is when once this is done, and we got it screwed in there, and we've got this screwed in the back, then we'll take these wood washers, which are inset, so when you put a screw in them, they're flush. We'll, we'll mount these on the wall of our house, on our trim work, painted to the color to match, and then these magnets will just stick right to it. That will be our, our middle source, and you can see it's hard to pull off, but sliding is how you get them off. And we're probably going to do one about every four feet on our trim to hold things on. So let's go ahead and prep all these out, and we will talk about some of the next steps after that. So they're all prepped. We're going to let those dry overnight. And then tomorrow we will do the resin. To figure out how much resin you actually need in them, though, uh, something that I do, I just, because I'm going to put them in, put the resin in with a syringe. That way I don't get any resin in the thread hole. Because you don't want to do that. I want to be able to go down inside. I just flipped it upside down and sealed it with some painter's tape and then measured how much liquid I could put into it, which I, for me, it was about five milliliters of resin. So now I know exactly how much resin to put in and instead of just filling it and then screwing the screw through, I thought it best just to pour the resin in there with the screw in there so the threads kind of grip tightly on that and that should hold that securely enough uh, for the mounting. We'll find out. It's uh, a work in progress. So we'll let this sit overnight and we'll come back and we'll do the resin work. We are back day two. Our standoffs are securely fastened with caulking and that's just to prevent the leaking when we pour the resin in. We want to make sure there's no seepage or that can make kind of a, a big ugly mess because the resin we're using is a self-leveling. Normally it's used for doing tabletops and uh, you need to be in a warm environment. That's why we, we purchased this type of resin because it is a uh, non-toxic and it's indoor, it's safe, there are no fumes. You need to be in about 72 degrees in a room that's warm 
uh, when you do it. So don't do it in your garage if it's cold. It, it won't cure very well. As well as you want to put your resin in a, a warm water bath to soften it up. And they suggest getting it up to about 90 degrees. So we just have it sitting here in boiling water uh, to get the temperature up a little bit. And then we're going to mix equal parts one to one. And you're going to start by putting in the hardener first and then the resin that makes it a lot easier to mix. And then we'll have to stir it for about three to five minutes. It'll get a little milky at first. When it goes back to being clear, that's when you know it's ready to use. And then we're going to use a syringe to put the resin inside. Because if I pour it, I'm probably going to get some resin on the threads that are in there. So that was the whole point in getting these syringes so I could put the syringe in and then squirt it down. And that's why we measure that it's about 5 cc so I know how much to put in each one. I figure I will do 2 ounces of the hardener and the resin for 4 ounces. That should be plenty to do all 8 of these standoffs. So with that, I guess we'll just go ahead and we'll start mixing. And uh, we won't bore you with that, but we'll probably speed through this entire process. one so we're gonna just uh, get a nice wet towel we will clean off the tops of these and make sure there's nothing in the threads and then we'll just let it sit and cure and we'll catch up again tomorrow after it's dried all right so now it's been overnight it's been over 12 hours and the resin should have had plenty of time to set it says it requires 12 hours to set completely and it looks solid so let's just make sure we didn't gum up the threads or it would be a waste of a standoff there we go threads just fine and we're going to be using these uh, which i may have mentioned earlier in our trim work around our windows doors garage any kind of vert lines and we may use them for some of our, our lightweight uh snowflakes and spiders depending on the season but basically because we're using every other hole we're just going to be able to take and put it through holes we're not using which is why we did the two inch standoffs at first. But as we mentioned earlier, we found that they had even a deeper one that was uh, a little over two inches and also a little bit wider, it was almost a full inch, which is what we'll use to make our next batch with when they come in. But that's how they're gonna mount. And we'll probably do two for every section like this, one at uh, either end, most likely. And then we're going to be mounting them with the fast cap and so we're gonna go ahead and go downstairs. I've got some setup already uh, for the door trim to kind of show you how we're just gonna mount it on and kind of what that looks like. So I got all the holes drilled and all of my washers put in except for one. So I just thought, you know, not that you guys need to see washers going in. But, you know, and I used a extra piece of my strip material to uh, line up my holes to drill them to where I want my standoffs to be because the last thing you would want to do is to put a hole in a spot where you can't put a standoff and then have to redo your hole. So we used a total of eight standoffs to do this door and so I'll pull back the view and set up the camera again and kind of show you me putting the trim up and how it looks like. All right, so we're going to start by putting the top one on, and then we'll put the two sides, and it'll all connect together.
go. That's all the trim. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Bring you on up to it. Like I said, this will work good for lightweight products, but I think anything with a lot of weight, I mean, I really have to pull it to the side to get it to move and to pull off. Got to put quite a bit of pressure on them to get them to, to move off, so. They'll be good because they're so lightweight and not a lot of surface area for wind really to grab them. But I think if you got into something like a, a giant snowflake, um, you may run into some issues with the weight unless you had a lot of them. I would better off just stand off, mount them directly into the, the wood or material or whatever. So that's what they look like all mounted. Well, it looks like we came to the end of another video. We hope you got a lot of good information out of this. If you did, think about giving us a thumbs up. It really does help our channel out. We want to kind of summarize, too, what we think the best use is for these. If you're mounting with washers, really you want to stick with lightweight products. But if you're mounting to larger areas of metal, you can increase your weight because you have more grab area with the metal, where the washer, if it comes part way off, you could lose contact, and that could cause some slippage. So think about that when it comes to your mounting of the particular mounts when it comes to this. We've got a lot of great videos coming up in the future. And if you want to know how you can win all eight of these magnetic mounts, we're going to give them away in 30 days. You simply need to subscribe to our channel, or already be a subscriber, and then leave a comment in the comments as to why you would like to win these, or what you would do with them if you had them. What props would you put these into? With that, guys, we want to thank you again for your time, and we'll see you in the next video.